Geno Smith guy's a bum. The guy's a bum. But most Seahawks fans don't see that. Now, that is our, our lead from the Pacific Northwest. The game of the day. The game of the day in the NFL. Real, the real ones know. The real ones know. Key NFC West matchup. Geno Smith and the Seattle football team playing host to Matthew Stafford and the Rams. Would the Rams be able to ram it all day and ram it all night? Were you watching? Check this game out. No, perhaps not. Well, it came down to the very end. In fact, there was bonus time. Bonus time. Overtime. Demarcus Robinson. Who? DeMar- That's a wide receiver. He made a gymnastic-like play, a one-handed catch, 39-yard touchdown reception in overtime. And the Rams walk out of Seattle yet again. In the win column, twenty-six to twenty, the final. L.A. only needed a field goal to win the game, but they said, "You know what? We're going to go for it." That, that was after they stuffed Seattle on a fourth down on the first possession of overtime. Matthew Stafford went for the win. He threw the deep ball to Robinson, and he got the W. So Stafford ends up with two hundred ninety-eight yards passing, two touchdowns. He did have an interception. The Rams have now won three straight after losing four of their previous five games, and the L.A. Rams are in second place in a very mediocre NFC West. And if you look at the Rams, big picture here for the L.A. Rams, uh, they got a pretty decent shot here. The 49ers aren't that good. The Rams play the Dolphins next week, who stink. Then the Patriots, so they should get to 6-4, and winning the next couple of games here. And then things get a little bit harder after that. But the Rams are set up pretty nicely, thank you very much, after an absolute terrible start at 1-4 and on the season. The better story, though, you know where the better story is. That's right, the losing locker room. And so that is where we will focus here as Geno Smith. What stinks? Geno Smith tossed three interceptions for the Seahawks. Give me your reaction to the performance by the Seattle quarterback, Geno Smith. So I've got Refresher Course, Peter Parker, and Growth Chart. And we will combine all of these things together, and uh, we are going to make a Rosetta Stone because Geno Smith, when you watch him play, it's like he's playing with a different language. You, You need a Rosetta Stone to understand what exactly he's doing with these bonehead plays at quarterback. So number Number one. Uh, Geno Smith, what he did, for those of you that are a little slow, the 12th man, this was a refresher course for the good people of Seattle. It was, right? Uh, You're not that guy, pal. You're not that guy. And Geno Smith is not that guy. We've tried to tell you, well, you're just a Ram fan. What do you know? I am a Ram fan. I'm wearing a Rams hat right now. doesn't matter. Okay, I'm trying to help you out. Really what I should be doing is singing the praises of Geno Smith because I hope he stays in Seattle for another five years. Can't play. He's not good. But yet, for some, there's this cloud. I don't understand. I don't get it. I don't. Er- You're pig headed. You won't listen. And I'm glad you won't listen because it's good. Keep sending them out there. Geno Smith gave you a refresher course. He spelled it all out for you, down to every period, explanation point, all that. How to play bonehead football. Geno Smith. That was the worst. Meltdown we have seen by a quarterback in the NFL. They went all the way back to 1991. Never before a quarterback leading fourth quarter, not one but two interceptions inside what the own 10 yard line there, including one that was picked by Cam Kinchins, 103 yard return, pick six for the LA Rams as a rookie, longest in franchise history. The two red zone interceptions in the fourth quarter that absolutely flipped the game. And he really is a Rams MVP, Geno Smith. What a performance. Uh, He he makes so many mistakes. How many? Too many. He makes too many mistakes. He's a high-end backup masquerading as a starter. And it's a joke. The, the, The Seahawks franchise is in this holding pattern. They're not going anywhere with this guy. They're not. They're mediocre. They're mid. And yet, they continue to send him out there. Right? I'd bench him. He's a poverty starter, Geno Smith. I'd bench him right now. And Seattle is entering the bye week. 
There's a storyline to follow here. They should bench Geno Smith. Uh, Mike McDonald, the head coach there, who was defensive guru, didn't look like much of a defensive guru here. Uh, but you've got Sam Howell. I don't think Sam Howell's all that good either, but he deserves an opportunity. You clearly thought enough of him. You held him in high enough regard that you traded for him in March from the Washington, whatever they're called. So give him a shot. All right, now page two. To Lambeau Field we go. Key matchup, a lot of hype. Tom Brady was there. Big game. Tom Brady on Fox had the call there. Jared Goff and the Lions. Listen to a statistically dominating performance in the rain, but doesn't matter because the Lions end up pummeling the Packers. The final score, not indicative. The game was not close. It was not. Uh, 24 to 14 was the final, which sounds like a close game. It sounds like a competitive game. It was not that. Uh, it was not a competitive game at all. So, what happened to Jordan Love for the Packers in a key game at home, small underdog? Or what happened? Two words shredded cheese. Those are the two words. Uh, now, the Jordan Love. Apologist, the Marching and Shadow Society that always apologizes for the performance of every quarterback. Uh, they will say, well, he was playing through a groin injury. Okay. And there was some debate whether he was going to play, but he played. And he, he said it wasn't a problem. They could have gone with Malik Willis. They went with him. And Jordan Love simply was not good. Uh, and if you're going to play quarterback in Green Bay, I would think you have to handle the weather. And it appeared that was a bit of a problem. But when you look down from 30,000 feet in the sky, it's much like the advice given to the young Peter Parker in Spider-Man. With great power comes great responsibility. And Jordan Love, without earning the massive contract, he didn't earn it. He only played a handful of games. He didn't play the whole year last year. But yet Jordan Love was given bonkers money, second highest paid quarterback in the National Football League. He's not. He's not that good. He's gotten the money, and he has verified those of us that question the Packers giving him that money. He is failing and and really failing and falling short of expectations. You, You win the turnover battle. People have said this for you. You win the turnover battle. And that is an essential, fundamental block in winning. And Jordan Love makes he makes far too many mistakes. Now, he's not as bad as Geno Smith. We talked about him earlier. But if you look at what happened last year as a first-year starter and what has happened this year, I'll give you some numbers to back up my point here. As a first-year starter last year in Green Bay, Love was picked off 11 times in 579 pass attempts. This season... In 240 pass attempts, he's got 10 interceptions. Who goofed? I've got to know. Uh, Yeah, not good. All right, now, uh, final point. We head now to the Valley of the Sun, and that is where James Conner, on a rainy day in Arizona, even in a dome, ran for 107 yards. Arizona physically manhandled. What we thought was a pretty good Chicago defense didn't look like that at all. 29-9, to the mid-Cardinals get the win in this game. And the Chicago Bears only nine points. That's it, nine points. So how do you explain Caleb Williams, who was the number one pick? Number one. Overall pick, number one. How do you explain Caleb Williams and the Bears getting smoked by the Cardinals? So this is, on, on my report card, I wrote down E emasculating. Uh, It is an emasculating loss. If you look at the growth chart, the growth chart for the Chicago Bears quarterback, Caleb Williams, right now it says stunted growth is what it says. His progress has been halted. And all those good vibrations uh, a couple weeks back, uh, Williams uh, tweaked his ankle. However, his overall body of work is the problem. Caleb Williams attempted 41 passes, completed 22 of them, for 216 yards and a passer rating of below 70, which is what you expect from a Bears quarterback pretty much every year. But this guy was supposed to be different. You didn't go against a good defensive team. Arizona is not. They are not that. Not a good defensive team. 
And that is the third game now that Caleb Williams has played completing fewer than 55% of his passes and his fourth with a passer rating under 70. Now, I didn't play in the NFL. All I do is host an overnight show, but I think that sucks. Uh, On this side of the microphone, he blows. And the offense, if you look at it all-encompassing, all-encompassing here, uh, they were held to their lowest point total of the season, the nine points. They didn't score a touchdown in the game, and they had one drive, only one drive that went past 35 yards. And on third down, they went 3 of 14 against the Cardinals defense, which coming into the game was the NFL's third or NFL's worst third down defense. Not, not third worst, worst third down defense in the NFL, Arizona. And for the season, Caleb Williams, if you look at it, he's completing less than 62% of his passes. And he's averaging 208 yards per game. His passer rating is below 85. And Matt Eberflus, the head coach of the Chicago football team, he's got some explaining to do. Uh, Yeah, there's another guy. Would anybody be shocked if the Bears fired him and just say, well, he ain't it. We're going to get rid of him. I don't know how he kept the job. I'm like, why did you do that? Did anyone think he was doing a great job? I mean, they won some games last year. Fine, they were mediocre. But does anyone think Matt Eberflus is a good coach and knows what he's doing? If you are, call up. I'd love to talk to you. Because I've never talked to anyone. I've never met anyone. Maybe his family, but I don't know them. So anyone I've talked to who I I think knows ball, uh, knows football, nobody said this guy's a good coach. And yet he kept the job, and now the Bears are where they're – you kind of thought they would be. They're just not very good. And Caleb Williams doesn't appear to know what he's doing. And here we are again. 